Well, the next principle, the second in our series, is about ILAX. Now, many of you probably have heard the term ILAC. It's a made-up word. It looks like this. And it stands for I am lovable and capable. We want children to have secure, strong, big ILACs. We want them to believe in themselves. So we want to be careful about the kinds of language we use and the kinds of reactions we have to behavior that increases their ILAC, does not destroy it. And for this exercise, what we're going to do is to ask for two volunteers who will have a magic wand waved over them, and they will become five and three years old. Now, who would like to volunteer to be a three-year-old? And come on down. And who over here would like to volunteer to be a five-year-old? Oh, Mark, great. <laughs> now, the only rule for you two is that you can't speak. Here's my magic wand, and you are now three, and you are now five. And we're glad to have you here. And I have the magic ability to take your ILAC right out of you and hold it in my hand. So, Anne, here is your ILAC. And Mark, here is your ILAC, your feeling that you are lovable and capable. Now, I'm going to play the part of a very tired mother. And I'm going to take these two children to the supermarket. Not a good time to go to the supermarket because it's between 5 and 6 on Friday. The children have been in daycare all day, and I've been at work. And we're all tired and cross, and it's hot, but we have to go because there is no food in the house. So I'm going to say to them before we go, we really have to go and get the shopping done. But we'll be as quick as we can, and when we get home, maybe for dessert we'll have popsicles tonight, okay? So I'm, I'm starting off. I'm trying. Now, when we go into the supermarket, you need to stay very close to me because it's a crowded time for shopping. So don't go far away from me. Stay close to the park. If I should do or say anything that hurts your ILAC, I want you to tear a little piece off it. Let me just show you how you might do that. Take a little piece off and put it on your lap and keep it there because you're going to need it. <laughs> okay? You need the little pieces. All right, now you join in with me if I start. Okay, here we go. Supermarket. Mark, come back here. I told you to stay with the cart. And leave that alone. I know they squeeze it on television, but you don't squeeze it in the supermarket. No, we don't want potatoes. Leave them. Get away from that candy. Don't pick that coupon. What else do you hear? Not what you say, but what you hear. Stop begging for things. How many times do I have to tell you not to touch that? How many times do I have to tell you not to touch that? Who was next? I told you we're only getting what's on the list today. We're only getting what's on the list today. Mark, stop hitting me. Mark, stop hitting your sister. And stop crying. And stop it. Stop crying. OK, now let's cut. And would you count the number of pieces that you tore off your ILAC? I have 11 plus the one that you ripped, so 12. 12 pieces off. And how long did it take, do you think? Less than four minutes. Less than four minutes. <laughs> And I had 13 pieces. 13. So 12 and 13 pieces. We really did a number on them, didn't we? Mm -hmm. 
in a very few minutes. Well, now we have to repair them. We can't let kids go around with limited, hurting feelings of being lovable and capable. So we need to put them back together. And I know you can't put your ILAX back the way they were in the beginning, but what I would like to have you do is to indicate to us if we say something or do something that makes you feel better, just pick up a piece and transfer it, okay? And I'm a little tired, so I think I'll sit down and let you guys do that. I'm so proud of the way you guys are listening to me. We're going to have to follow up with those lollipops, those uh, um, popsicles later. Uh, you did a really good job picking oranges last time, Ann. Would you like to pick the oranges this time? Thanks for holding on to the cart like I asked you to. Mark, you're being so nice to your sister. <laughs> Mark, would you like to help? Pick up the things you knocked over? <laughs> <laughs> through here. You guys are doing a great job. Now you're running out of stuff to say, aren't you? Mm. It would have been easier if we hadn't torn them apart, right? So there are a couple of things that might work. Let me try them and see. Listen, guys, I am so sorry I'm so cross today. We've all had a very long, hot, hard day, and I'm not behaving very well. Let's pretend that we can start all over again, shall we? Good guys. Okay. Now, how many pieces would that make you put back? Does it come with popsicles? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Quite a few. It would, it would uh, validate the fact that you were feeling uh, frustrated and acknowledging it and letting us know that it was not necessarily our fault that we weren't being in a pro we were not being listening, but we were um, being validated by your love and your apology and, and your, your understanding that, that it's been rough for all of us and to please forgive me. Nice. And your physical location. When you were walking around before and sort of hollering over your shoulder at us, you felt further away and, and more critical. And when you came over, nice to hear the nice things you had to say about how tough it was for all of us. It just the, the whole thing felt like it was much more supportive. And to get that hug. The hug was, the nice. Hug was nice. The hug was nice, mm -hmm. even without popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were honest, although you know we're playing games, would you, did you find those comments hurtful? Certainly, like we couldn't do anything right. Mm -hmm. So when you can't do anything right, where do you go with that feeling? I just don't feel lovable, and I don't feel capable, and I lose my eye lack. Mm -hmm. And Mark, did you mind it? I mean, you knew we were play acting. But even your tone and, and the way that you were just sort of hollering at us over your shoulder, it felt much different than the time we've spent with you already where you felt mm -hmm. really supportive mm -hmm. and you know I knew we were playing a game but didn't feel like mm -hmm. at all like uh, you were considering us or, or mm -hmm. caring about what was going on for us you were just sort of yelling. Mm -hmm. So what do we do if we're with a group of friends or educators or family daycare providers or teachers what do we do to let them know how fragile children are although they're very strong also, but how damaging it is to use this kind of language and to tear apart their fe children's feelings of being lovable and capable. Um, I, I do think it goes back to your first point, which was limiting the negatives in your language and, and um, giving yourself you know, ten, 10 a day for the really, really important times, maybe, as you said, health and safety issues, but what you just did, uh, acknowledging your, that you were tired and they were tired, um, acknowledging it was a tough day, um, that just seemed to change the whole tenor of the room. So mm -hmm. I think that honesty about 
we're just we all get pooped sometimes. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that that's really helpful. Okay. One one way to to keep the eye lack going. Thanks, Deb. Yeah, Lynn. I think the other piece of it is again going back to the education piece is the experiential aspect of this, and I think that having these kinds of opportunities for providers to sit and to tear a piece of paper and, and to really experience that is, is much more important and more impactful than us just using our words to try to get a point across. So mm-hmm. I think those experiential opportunities are important mm-hmm. as well. So we're saying that hands-on learning is as important for adults as it is for children. Absolutely. Yeah. I was thinking in, in the line of hands-on, also as a as a teacher, having a director who's very supportive, and um, you know, I think that the community we need we need to remember. In your introduction, you were talking about. I hope that this rejuvenates you. There are certain times of the year, after you know you've gone a few months in a classroom, you need to remember things. You need the support. You need a teacher's night out. You need a just a go bowling or something kind of thing and and remind each other have the conversations I think finding times for yourself are really important and also looking at what you're doing and seeing if you're doing it in a positive way and changing it and I know for me as a director one of the best techniques that I can use with teachers is just writing down what they've said for a long period of time and then sitting down with them and going over that. Because a lot of times I won't have to say anything. They'll say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that I was focusing on that one child so negatively Mm -hmm. for that entire half hour. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a really good technique for myself and for the staff. Nancy, talk about it from a family daycare provider's point of view, because that's a lonely place to be. A lot of it is getting the support from the parents. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, if you're dealing with a tough child that day and you are talking to the parent, a lot of times the parents don't want to admit that it's their child. Mm-hmm. My child does nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. But when you talk to the parents off key, like a lot of times every year I go do a get together with the parents and the neighbors in my area and we do a barbecue. We just did this one this past Saturday, matter of fact. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see the parents with the kids um, get to mingle, and it's not just in a daycare setting. You know, it's more unfamiliar to them, and they more relaxed. The kids know who everybody is, and you can actually talk about things and you don't feel like you're bringing a problem to the table that we need to take care of mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you do it in a more relaxed atmosphere. That's a nice point. So social gatherings with parents when you can actually talk about not only the problems, but what's going well, what you take pleasure in their child about, what their child is accomplishing, a kind act that your child did. It just warms people's hearts when that happens. And I think parents are kind of almost conditioned to expect criticism. I don't know what we do to them to make that happen. But it is so important to remember that parents, too, have ILAX, and so do family daycare providers, and so do teachers, and so do directors. 